This is a very exciting day for us here at Holy Trinity. As I mentioned, it's the first day of our Sunday school year. The choir is back in action, so we'll be blessed by a, a beautiful choir anthem a little bit later on. And I wanted to set your sights for the future. We now have a complete listing of activities and events from now till the end of June 2025. And these listings appear on this green piece of paper, two-sided copies, and these are located on the usher's table right near the back door there. Please take a copy home with you. You can begin circling important dates. You can mark these dates on your calendar, and everybody's going to be happy. But wait, there's more. The new calendars are in for 2025. Look at this beautiful calendar. It's yours free of charge. So you can take all the important dates that are listed here, plug them into your calendar, and um, take a few calendars with you, share them with your friends and neighbors and so forth. The best part of all, free of charge. Everything is free of charge. Everything we offer here is free. Isn't that nice? So take your calendars home. Um, a lot of the young people laugh at me because they're like, well, I just use my cell phone. I put all my dates in my cell phone. That's fine. I'm old-fashioned. I like to write things down and put it on the kitchen calendar. I like to see it every day right there in the kitchen. So if you're like me, pick up your calendar events and your calendar for the year 2025. And I know that Wendy Schutz is very happy about these calendars because Wendy has this keen uh, way of remembering everybody's birthday. And she's been looking for these calendars for months, so she's very happy. She told me today that the calendars are here. God bless her. Today I greet you in the name of our risen and victorious Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the title of my sermon today is, We Have Come This Far by Faith. I want to pause for a moment and indicate that doing church is hard work. I'll say that again. Doing church is hard work. Just on Sunday morning, think about all the volunteers and other people who had to come together to make this day special. We had to make sure the sanctuary was clean. We had to make sure we paid the electric bill so the lights would stay on. Uh, Kathy Sicaro uh, diligently selected the hymns for today. Uh, Jennifer Jensen, oh, Jessen picked out stuff for the children. The choir rehearsed. We have ushers standing by. We, we have uh, a commu communion assistant standing by. We have somebody who had to read the scriptures. And you think about this. The Sunday school rooms had to be decorated. Doing church is hard work. There's nothing easy about it. It requires a multitude of volunteers who do dedicated work day in and day out, year in and year out. We're also in the middle of a renovation project where a lot of blood, sweat, and tears is being expended down the hallway here to make the rooms and the hallway very fresh and clean. Doing church is hard work. And sometimes we get weary. Sometimes we say, oh my goodness, I have to go back to the church. I'm tired. Why doesn't somebody else do it? Or, oh, I have to attend this meeting. Or, oh, I got to do this. And then you have to worry about the exterior of the church, the, the lawn, the hedges. And then you have the fun of when things begin to break. This is an older building, so we have plumbing issues. We have heating issues once in a while. And, and sometimes you can say, this is very, very hard work. However, it's not about us. It's about the Spirit working in and through us. This is not a country club. This is a faith community. This is not a fraternal organization. It's a faith community. The church is founded upon Jesus Christ, and Jesus promises to fulfill us, to fortify us, to give us the energy, the guidance, the wisdom to get it done. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. I'll say it again. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. And everything we do in this building and outside this building is to the glory of God. 
and to the glory of Jesus Christ and to the glory of the Holy Spirit that gives us the energy. Now, I have a, the gospel reading today illustrates this. One day, Jesus is standing in front of his friends. And Jesus says to his friends, who do people say I am? What, what's the word out there? And, and some say, well, well, some think you're John the Baptist. And other people think you're Elijah. Other people think you're one of the prophets. And then here's the key. Jesus says, who do you say I am? And Peter boldly stands up and says, Jesus, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the one we've been waiting for. You are the son of the most high God. And what Peter basically is saying is, everything we do is about you, Jesus. It's not about us. Because later in the narrative, Peter says, we left everything to follow you, Jesus. We are devoting our life for you. It's all about you. And we serve gladly. Later in the dialogue, Peter says another thing. What does he say? He says something to the point where, Lord, where else can we turn? You have the words of eternal life. We need not look anywhere else. What I'm saying to you is, church is about Jesus and Jesus only. Church has always been about Jesus. Church is about Jesus. And church will always be about Jesus until the second coming of Jesus. We often look at things that have to be done around here and we sweat it out. We worry about it. We get tired. We do backbreaking labor. Almost as if it's all up to us but when we think about it, we're doing this for Jesus. We're doing this for the mission Jesus has called us for right here in Rockaway, New Jersey. We are glorifying God. That's why it's such a joy to, to beautify this building because it's not just the building. It's the house of God. And God has called us to this house, not only to worship, but to welcome others from the community here to offer hospitality, to offer support, to offer hope, to offer invitations for everybody to come to know Jesus Christ. Later in the dialogue, Peter and Jesus are talking again. And check out what Jesus says to Peter. After Jesus, uh, Peter said, you are the Messiah, now check out what's up on the monitor right now. Jesus said to Peter, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. You know what? When we set our mind on human things, we're in deep trouble. Because here's what we do. Even though we're a faith community, we worry about the budget. We worry about paying the bills. We worry about repairing things that are breaking. We worry about getting enough volunteers to do things. We worry about getting volunteers to do a big spring festival or to sing in the choir. We're always worried about stuff. We worry about who's going to put the refreshments out there. Who's going to make the coffee? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And Jesus said, why are you worried about all these human things? Set your mind on divine things and the rest will take care of itself. Every time you walk into this building to serve God, that's what you're doing. You're serving God. It's a joy. And here's the thing. The Bible is clear. It's not you doing the work. It's the Holy Spirit energizing you to do the work. That's what's so great about it. I would be lying if I stood up here and said that there were not moments when I get frustrated. I get frustrated when things don't get done around here. I get frustrated when people say they're going to do things and they don't. I get frustrated when it takes a year to do something that would normally take two weeks. But I have to get back in my prayer chair and say, by the grace of God, we will glorify God. And we do. I thank God that we're responding to the call of God in everything that we do here. That's why we have to say, we're not working for us. We're working for God. Everything glorifies God. 
If you're taking out the trash at the house of God, you're taking out the trash to the glory of God. I know that sounds funny, but it is true. If you're, if you're painting a wall, you're painting that wall to the glory of God. If you're inviting a friend to church, you are inviting that person by the grace of God to be transformed by the Holy Spirit. That's what's so great about what we do. I t- I'll tell you a story. Years ago, I served in a church, and there was a woman who was in charge of the annual church picnic at this church. It wasn't here. It was somewhere else years ago. And this woman literally worried herself sick about the annual church picnic. She would say, well, what if we have bad weather? And what if nobody shows up? Or what if we don't have enough food? And what if we run out of chairs? And what if, what if this and what if that? And you know what she was doing? Exactly what Jesus criticized Peter. Jesus said to Peter, you're worrying about human things. Set your mind on divine things. What, what else did Jesus say? He said, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is going to take care of itself. Did you know that years ago, and thank God it was years ago, years ago church council meetings would go for four hours. And some of you are smiling because you remember those days. You start at 7 o'clock at night. This is church council. You start at 7 o'clock at night. You get done at 11 and everybody's bleary-eyed because we're worried about the budget and what we're doing and how we're doing it and who's going to do this and who's going to do that. We need to worry about that. Don't get me wrong. We do. But when push comes to shove, you have to say, God will bless these efforts, what we're doing here. That's what he's saying to Peter. Jesus is saying, God will bless our efforts. Turn it over to God. Do the best you can, but God is going to lead the way. We worry about strategies. We worry about marketing strategies. We worry about how how do we recruit volunteers. But you know what? The church has been standing for almost 2,000 years because God has blessed the Christian church around the world. It's not about us. It's about God. Whatever we do, we glorify God. You know, I love the ELCA. Our national church has a motto. It says, God's work, our hands. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I like the way they word that. I like the priority. Remember, it says God's work first. Our hands are doing the work. But it's God's work. And that's what makes all the difference in the world. When you do God's work, God is smiling upon you. God is patting you on the back. God is cheering you on. Hey, once in a while we fail. We're only human, right? Once in a while we drop the ball. Once in a while we don't fulfill the promises we make. I include myself. We forget to call somebody. We forget to do this. We forget to do that. But it's still God's work. Our hands. And God can take our feeble hands and we can do amazing things. This congregation is thriving because you are responding to the call of God. And like I said, there may be days or nights when you ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why why am I devoting all these hours to the church? What difference is it going to make? Let me tell you, in the history of this congregation, it has made a huge difference because you have responded to the call of God of God in Jesus Christ. We've come this far by faith and we will continue until the second coming of Jesus Christ. The title of my sermon today is We've Come This Far by Faith and it's faith that sustains everything we do. Everything. And I borrowed my title from a song that was written in 1956 by a guy named Albert Goodson The words are printed, or appear on your monitor, rather. Look at those words. We've come this far by faith. 
leaning on the Lord, trusting on his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, 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 no turning around. We've come this far by faith. I will trust in the Lord till I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield till I die. We've come this far by faith. May the good Lord bless each and every one of us with a faith that goes beyond the mundane, with a faith that is fortified in glorifying God first and foremost in all that we do, with a faith that says, I'm here for a reason. Each one of us can say, I'm here for a reason, to serve God and make God's world better. And you know what God is saying to you? God is saying, when you leave this planet and when you answer the call to go to heaven, leave your world better than you found it. Leave your neighborhood better than you found it. Leave your friendships better than you found it. And may you be able to put your head on your pillow at the end of the day and say, thank you, God, because it's not all about me. It's about you. Thank you, God. It's not perfect and never will be, but you have sustained us and will continue to do that. Today, I invite you to get in your prayer chair sometime later today and just give thanks to God for ways you can serve God, serve the world, serve those in need, and give it all you got. Because it's not about us, it's about God. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.